इनको पीछे बैनर तो लगा लो यार मेरे पास बस बैनर है नहीं मैं ढूंढ रहा था कहाँ है विशाल ने लिखा है so uh, good evening respected seniors uh, colleagues and all the wonderful and dynamic residents who have logged in uh, it's it gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all for the fifth master class of the online post graduate uh, teaching program which we have named kaksha so kaksha is a is a novel pg uh, teaching program envisioned by ros which will cover all the major topics and the common topics over a period of the next two years uh, covering all the current curriculum of post graduate ophthalmology training we'll be bringing the best of national and state faculty uh, experts to share their knowledge and interact with you the residents are also encouraged to put forward their doubts in the chat box and we'll address all the questions in a very interactive way coming to this class we have today with us my teacher none other than professor tanush dada sir uh, uh, from rp center aims new delhi to enlighten us about uh, one of the most important examination skills gonioscopy which is also very frequently ignored by all the residents uh, i welcome the rs president khilani sir president elect dr sanjeev desai and the dynamic secretary dr gulam mali from jodhpur for today's kaksha today's hot seat residents are ayushi from uh, jaipur sakshi from medical college ajmer and mahendra from medical college kota all are final year post graduates from different colleges and there will be a grand quiz at the end of the class comprising of two questions and that is open for all the post graduates and all the attendees so keep a strong vigil and listen carefully i will now invite uh, dr anko sina a very prominent glaucoma specialist max vision eye center jaipur and also a student of tanu sir who is going to moderate today's class over to you ankur sir for a brief introduction of sir and uh, allowing him to uh, start the class uh, thank you vishal uh, it's indeed a very great pleasure to introduce tanu sir who has been a good uh, teacher and a mentor to me right from the days of my residency and uh, sir has always been a very approachable uh, teacher for all difficulties for all the jrs and srs sir is currently heading the uh, uh, glaucoma services and is a professor at rp center and uh, he is also on the board of directors for asia pacific glaucoma society and a member of education and consensus meeting for the world glaucoma association he also is an associate editor of journal of glaucoma and is on the editorial board of american journal of ophthalmology and international uh, glaucoma review so off to you sir for uh, your talk sir and uh, thank, uh, thank you thank you thank you very much ankur and dear vishal and all the office bearers of the rajasthan and jaipur of thermic societies so it's a great pleasure to come and address all the residents on this skill of gonioscopy which is a skill which is quite underused and very few people are actually doing gonioscopy so this lecture is just to motivate you to buy your own gonioscope and start it doing it routinely in your opd so today's lecture it comprises a lot of videos and gonio photographs and this is not my hard work this is hard work of many many residents of rp center so i just want to dedicate this lecture to all the residents of rp center who have been instrumental in you know gathering all this data and all this images of the angle it's a very tedious task and you, we take 20 images and then you get one good image so this is our work over the last 10 to 15 years collecting this gonio photograph and you will see all of them have rp center residents on the cover so gonioscopy essentially is required to distinguish between an open angle from angle closure disease so this is the primary function of gonioscopy to differentiate whether it's an open angle where the drainage system trabecular meshwork is visible or it's a an angle closure where the iris occludes the trabecular meshwork so basically the aqueous drains from the trabecular meshwork and any time the iris closes this this is angle closure and if the trabecular meshwork is visible it's an open angle that is the primary purpose of doing a gonioscopy now these are two videos you can see on the top video you follow up from the iris you will see the structures visible this is the iris ciliary body then this white zone is the scleral spur and above that is the pigmented part of the trabecular meshwork so this denotes an open trabecular meshwork where the angle structure is visible 
This is an open angle. Now you contrast this video with the video below. Here you will see that the tabecular meshwork is not visible. The iris is occluding the tabecular meshwork. So this is an open angle visible on gonioscopy. This is a closed angle visible on gonioscopy. And if you don't learn anything about gonioscopy further than this, it's quite okay. You should know how to distinguish an open angle from angle closure. And this is a skill that is often not developed during postgraduate training and very critical for patient management. The other important aspects of gonioscopy that you learn as on the way is to distinguish between congenital anomalies of the angle. So this is gonioscopy of a patient with primary congenital glaucoma. And this is a totally different set of anomaly where no angle structure is visible, but this is due to an anterior insertion of the iris. So this is not angle closure. This is a developmental anomaly of the angle when no angle structures are visible because there is an anterior insertion of the iris onto the trabecular meshwork. Now, why is it important to differentiate open angle from angle closure? Can the Manjula please mute everybody else except the speaker? Sure, doctor. Yes. So primary angle closure glaucoma carries threefold risk of blindness as compared to primary open angle glaucoma. That is why you must differentiate between these two conditions. Now, when you perform gonioscopy, it should be done in a dark room. You should use a very small slit of light that should not cross the pupil. And beginners can start with a Goldman 2 mirror. So you, after topical anesthesia, you retract the lower lid and just put in the gonioscope and then you adjust the gonioscope and move the slit lamp to view the angle. So patient, you must inform the patient because you apply pressure on the eye. Some patient can have a vasovagal attack. So inform them about this pressure, which will be on their eye for a few seconds. And this is how you do the gonioscopy with Goldman type lenses. They have a coupling fluid. You retract the lower lid and push in the gonioscope. The other type of gonioscope is the indentation gonioscopy. So here I'm using a Postner lens. If this handle is not available, that is that is known as a Suzman lens. So here, just after topical anesthesia, you apply the lens onto the eye and then you apply pressure and see the opening of the angle. So this is indentation gonioscopy being performed in the slit lamp. So these are two commonly used techniques of gonioscopy. And the third one is with the swan lens that is becoming in increasingly important intraoperative gonioscopy. Now you can see before surgery, a view of the angle structures, no structure visible. It is an anterior insertion of the iris. This video depicts the other technique is to do a handheld slit lamp. And this is a coipis gonio lens it has been put in the eye. So this is direct gonioscopy with the coipis lens. These are different techniques of performing gonioscopy. And it's very important that you now have to learn about intraoperative gonioscopy. So here, basically, when you operate the patient, the, the head is tilted 30 to 45 degree on the other side and the microscope is tilted the other way. So in this way, you can view the angle structures. So both the microscope has to be tilted and the patient head has to be tilted. And this is what is currently used for minimally invasive glaucoma surgery. So you have to learn this technique of intraoperative gonioscopy. And once this, these tools are turned, then you can see the angle structure. And here you can see through the gonioscope, a goniotomy is being performed. So you have to learn how to visualize the angle structures in the operation theater because all the new techniques of glaucoma surgery entail intraoperative gonioscopy. Now, once you put in the gonioscope, you have to familiarize yourself with the angle structures. So let us follow up from the iris. So above the iris, you will see this band. This is the ciliary body band. Above that is a white zone. That is the scleral spur. And then you have the pigmented tabecular meshwork, the non-pigmented tabecular meshwork, and the Schwalbe's line. This denotes a completely open angle. So now you have put in a gonioscope. And here you can see, 
the iris is visible then this white zone is visible that is the scleral spur above that is the pigmented part of the tabeculum mesh work then the non pigmented part and the shawl based line so this is a completely open angle visible on gonioscopy with moderate pigmentation and whenever the scleral spur is visible it's a clear cut case of an open angle type of glaucoma this is another video here you follow up from the iris you can see the ciliary body band is visible then this white zone of the scleral spur is visible and then you have this pigmented part of the tabecular meshwork visible so again a very widely open angle now how to identify the angle structures you should learn what is known as the corneal wedge this is a technique to identify the shawl based line or the termination of the desmets membrane so here you make a 30 degree angulation of the slit lamp and you will see two beams of light in the angle through the gonioscope the first beam is from the corneal epithelium and the second beam is from the corneal endothelium and the point at which they are meeting that is the shawl based line termination of desmet membrane and this is the starting point of the angle so at any time if this apex is not visible or it is occluded by the iris that means it's a completely closed angle so this is the corneal wedge technique again repeating corneal epithelium corneal endothelium these two beams of light meet at the shawl based line the starting point of the angle so if you have difficulty in identifying the angle structures you must make the corneal wedge so once you make the corneal wedge and have you have a narrow slit so are the th any of the residents on the hot seat what do you think is the diagnosis of this condition sir primary uh, angle closure double hum sign double hum sign sir so what what does it indicate double hum double hum sign, hum sign indicates what plateau iris sir very good so the first hump is when you apply pressure with the indentation gonioscopy you will get two humps the equator of the lens and a prominent displaced ciliary body so this is sine wave typical configuration which is very pathognomic of plateau iris configuration now any of the residents is this a open angle or angle closure sir that is the uh, angle closure sir angle closure angle close why do you say angle close what is this visible sir it's a pigmented line hai, but uh, sir residual uh, attachment uh, of the iris to the shawl base the corneal wedge uh, apex of the corneal wedge i think uh, you can see the corneal wedge the yeah. apex of the corneal wedge is at this point and this pigmentation is anterior to yes, the shawl base line anterior to wedge so this is a pseudo pigmentation it's a completely closed angle sir so somebody has mentioned this as pseudo trabecular meshwork yes yes can this be labeled as pseudo trabecular meshwork yes yes that is a, something which is mistaken as a trabecular meshwork and if you are not aware that this is anterior because then many people think it is an open angle with a abnormal pigmented trabecular meshwork so that is something you have to be careful now <clears throat> there is some background noise constantly coming yeah manjula please look into it somebody's mic is on it seems okay now it is better so any of the residents what do you th think this is what can you see in the angle <laughs> it is open, open angle, angle sir. very good and anything abnormal visible in the angle uh, sir uh, this is there a uh, line after background noise sir जेनेसिसन band like shawl based line visible in the angle so here what do you think is the pathology pseudo exfoliation sir 
सर फ्लफी मैटर व्हाइट फ्लफी मैटर इट इज नो व्हाइट फ्लफी मैटर इज सेम मैटर व्हाट इज दिस मैटर द पिगमेंट सो दिस पिगमेंट this is classical case of pigment dispersion syndrome okay pigment dispersion okay this is superior angle being viewed and whenever you have this dense uniform pigment especially in the superior angle that is a sign of pigment dispersion syndrome so this is quite classic this dense uniform pigment completely obliterating the trabecular meshwork so you have to look for krukenberg spindle and here you can see retroillumination the light is coming from the holes in the iris because of pig massive pigment release concave iris configuration and very dense uniform pigment is visible so this this was a case of pigment dispersion syndrome so just one question for the residents is the inferior pigmentation of angle pretty commonly found yeah so inferior angle yeah. pigmentation it can be normally it is heavily pigmented because of the effect of gravity and any laser pi you do any surgery you do the inferior angle becomes pigmented but especially for pigment dispersion you get this superior angle which is dense uniformly pigmented so that is very pathognomic of pigment dispersion thank you sir and any of the residents what is this sir kogan ray syndrome sir this is open angle क्शन have very sphere cores as compared to a primary open angle glaucoma they progress very fast more sphere disease so you have to be very cautious and call them for closer follow up so this is salt and pepper pigmentation now this gonio video is very important here you can see that iris is coming up and attaching to the trabecular meshwork so there are two three very important signs here you have this irregular pigmentation scattered all over the trabecular meshwork that means the iris has previously come in contact with the angle structures and then you have the synechia formation the iris is attaching one two three places to the trabecular meshwork so this is classic primary angle closure disease and if there is no glaucoma to optic neuropathy you classify this as primary angle closure and this is absolute indication for doing a yag laser array dot me so this is starting of angle closure here trabecular meshwork visible but you have the attachments of the iris onto the trabecular meshwork so this is classical sign of angle closure and immediately the patient should be subject to a yag laser array dot me so is this open angle or angle closure Sir, angle angle closure. closure. Very closure. good. So this is a very specific sign, which is known as the Mount Fuji sign. So you have this Mount Fuji in Japan. So you have a volcanic type mountain, and here you can see ciliary processes are visible under the iris. So this dome shape elevation of the iris, typical of a angle closure with a thick anteriorly displaced lens. now once you have diagnosed angle closure the next important step is to see whether the closure is reversible or it is synechial so primary position you have put in the gonioscope the iris is attached to trabecular meshwork now when you manipulate the lens that means you move the the mirror towards the angle being viewed or ask the patient to look towards the opposite side in the primary position no structure was visible when you manipulate the gonioscope you will see this white zone has become visible so this is the scleral spur has become visible so this this means there was a appositional angle closure primary position angle was appearing close but on manipulation the scleral spur has become visible so this becomes primary angle closure suspect and this is being done now with the posner lens or the suzman lens so primary position the iris is opposed to the 
trabecular mesh work, you put in the lens and you apply a pressure. And when you apply pressure, the aqueous is pushed into the angle. And then you see the scheral spur has become visible. So ideally, the indentation gonioscopy is the gold standard technique to differentiate appositional closure from synical closure. You require some more expertise in this because you can create decimate folds. So the basic purpose is that without tupping fluid, you apply a slight pressure and see that the angle has opened up, serial spur has become visible. So the first technique of manipulation is done with Goldman type lenses. And this technique of indentation is done with the Zeiss type lenses. Commonly available are the Suzman and the Postner lens. Now, this is a very important gonio video. So, any patient who develops vascular occlusion or proliferative biotic retinopathy, before you dilate, you must do a gonioscopy. And here you can see these are new, this is new vascularization of the anterior chamber angle. You can see fine filiform blood vessels which are crossing the scheral spur, this white zone, arborizing on the tabecular meshwork. So this is a classical case of new vascularization of the anterior chamber angle. It is still an open angle stage. And once you diagnose this, it's critical to do a pan retinal photocoagulation because these patients progress very fast and go into complete synical angle closure with very high intraocular pressure. So this is very important to do undilated gonioscopy, all vascular occlusion, CRVO, and patients of polyphytic diabetic retinopathy when they come for follow-up before you dilate. And if you don't do gonioscopy, then this is what happens. So now disease has progressed and you get this dense synical closure of the angle. There's a fibrovascular membrane and the entire angle becomes occluded. And then this is a new vascular glaucoma, which has gone into angle closure stage. Now, any of the residents, what is your diagnosis? Interior insertion, maybe insertion of iris. So diagnosis, what is likely differential diagnosis? Posterior amniotic. What can you see first? That just... Developmental glaucoma, sir. Peril spur. Peripheral anterior sinusy, broad base. Ab dhyan no. se dekho, iska answer slide mein likha hua hai. <laughs> so interior displacement of scleral spur. Ye dekho, ye kya likha hai? Yeah. The axon filled rigor anomaly. Axon filled. Axon filled rigor syndrome. <laughs> You have this band-like anteriorly displaced shawl based line and the iris tissue attaching to it. So this is very different from angle closure. This is a developmental anomaly, anterior segment degenesis. So uh, there is a this prominent shawl based line attached to the anteriorly displaced periphery of the cornea and iris tissue attaching to this. So this is very pathognomic. Once you do gonioscopy and learn how to do this, this is a video. 14-year-old boy with Eisenfield Rieger syndrome and you can see very anteriorly displaced shawl base line and this iris tissue attaching to the shawl base line. So very anterior attachments. So this is classical Eisenfield's Rieger syndrome. Usually you will see this in both the eyes. So this is one very nice anomaly you can identify solely with gonioscopy. Very anteriorly inserted iris strands and the pupil will be pull to one side and you will get correctopia. And this is again prominent anteriorly displaced shawl base line and the iris is going and attaching to it. So this is what we call as anterior insertion of the iris. This may be a finding in normal patients and also can be seen in juvenile open angle glaucoma. The anterior insertion of the iris. This is a Deep anterior chamber, widely open angle. So this should not be confused with angle closure. These are iris processes, anterior insertion of the iris. They follow the contour of the angle and you put light, they will contract to eye stimulus. So any of the residents? Uh, an iridia Did with the rudimentary process. I attempt, sir. Very good. So you have yeah, going rehearsed, rehearsed very well. So this is a patient, you can see this lens is visible here and you go up, all these ciliary processes are visible 
and that is why aniridia is a misnomer you have this rudimentary iris stump present which goes and blocks the tabecular meshwork that causes rise in intraocular pressure and when you do gonioscopy you see this rudimentary iris stump all 360 degree and atrophic ciliary process is present So, any of the residents, what is this? Angle recession. Angle recession glaucoma. Angle recession, sir. Very good. So, what do you? What is the classical finding? Widening of the ciliary Widening. band, sir. Sir, widening of irregular widening of. Yeah, very good. Irregular. It's very important. This word irregular. Sometimes you have high myopia where you will have uniform white ciliary body band visible. So you have to compare always with the fellow eye and. When you see irregular widening of ciliary body band, that is hallmark of angle recession glaucoma, and these patients require lifetime follow-up because the iopic dies 10, 15, 20 years after injury. So any blunt injury after six weeks, you should do gonioscopy and see if there is irregular widening of ciliary body band. If present, ask the patient to come for follow-up every six months lifetime. So this is very interesting use of gonioscopy. This patient came to RPC casualty and he had a sealed perforation. Everything was fine. And he was sent back that perforation as sealed. And then he came up back after a few weeks with, you know, recurrent pain and some redness and uveitis. And then somebody referred to me for gonioscopy. And you can see this glass foreign body in the angle. So this is one very important use of gonioscopy to diagnose foreign bodies in the anterior chamber. And then also you require gonioscopy assisted removal of these foreign bodies. So this was very unique case. This was a glass foreign body in the angle. And now glaucoma, you do trabeclectomy surgery. So this shows a wide open trabeclectomy ostium. There is a cleft in the sclera and you can see the aridectomy. So once you do a trabeclectomy, you should do gonioscopy and see whether it is patent or there is anything blockage. So you can see this is a superior angle and this is the cleft visible in the sclera. And here you can see the iris has gone into the cleft. So patient had a shallow AC and because of that, the iris has gone into the cleft and blocked the ostium. So that is very important that you do gonioscopy and establish what is the cause of failure of trap or raised IOP after trabeclectomy if the pressure is high. Now this is what I'm showing you is the new techniques of minimally invasive glaucoma surgery. All of them require gonioscope visualization of the angle. So the assistant holds the gonioscope and the surgeon has to put these implants after making a cut in the tabecular meshwork into the canal of Schlem. So this is one of the intracanalicular stents. This is one of the hydrous implant. So this is under gonioscopy guidance that these, all these implants are being put in the Schlem's canal to dilate the Schlem's canal. So it's very important to now learn intraoperative gonioscopy. And this is just another video to show you. This is a illuminated micro catheter that is put into the canal of Schlem after deroofing it. And then through the gonioscopy, now you can see under the gonioscopy, this movement of this fiber optic through the canal of Schlem. So gonioscopy is useful for interoperative guidance in minimally invasive glaucoma surgeries. And there is a very good website for you to go through these, I just share that with you. This was another very interesting case. So, on gonioscopy, there appeared to be a prominent shawl based line. Just give me a minute. I think there is this. This is a heavy video and it's not going forward.
I think the presentation has gone off, it seems. Yeah, I'm just trying to get it back. Just give me a minute. Is the presentation back? Yes, sir. So this is WGA.1. This is the World Telecom Association website, free for all the residents. So just go to WGA.1. And this has all the basic and advanced courses for glaucoma diagnosis. So you will learn about gonioscopy, optic disc evaluation, visual fields, IOP. So you can go through all the videos on this website. And so the residents on the hot seat. So eye syndrome, Kogan. Very good. Very good. We, Ankur and Vishal, you have picked up very brilliant residents. <laughs> <laughs> so I think one of you said Kogan Reese in the previous slide. So this is typical idocongenital endothelial syndrome, Kogan Reese syndrome and angle closure and you can see these pigmented nodules on the iris so this is typical case of kogan reese eye syndrome so any of the three residents what do you feel is the diagnosis iris processes primary juvenile glaucoma so any of the other two Axenfield just had one of the cases. Very, very, very good, very rider. good. This is Axenfield Rieger syndrome. See, prominent band like Schwalbe's line and iris attached to the periphery of this line. So, this is typical Axenfield Rieger syndrome. Okay. And this is bilateral as compared to eye syndrome, which is unilateral. This, any of one of you, this you should be able to diagnose now. Highly pigmented tabular mass of sir. So this is again pigment. 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 And once you get optic neuropathy, then you call it as pigmentary glaucoma. Hanji, batao, bacho. Open angle. Very good. Iris process may be present is not. Tumna picture made the upper the hook alikai from neurology. Yet this has consultation, this has consultation has come to RP center casualty. So, up here, but I'll talk about my treat dunga. But I'll be able to talk about a chance to correct it. Sir, कोई हिंट दे दीजिए कि पेशेंट को ना सिरोसिस है और साथ में सीजर्स हो रहे हैं हेपेटिक प्रॉब्लम है सिरोसिस का और सीजर्स हो रहे हैं विल्सन्स डिजीज हाँ वेरी गुड वेरी सो दिस इज वन ऑफ द डायग्नोस्टिक टेस्ट फॉर विल्सन्स डिजीज दे आर ऑफन रेफर टू आवर कैजुअलिटी बाय गैफ्ट्रो और न्यूरो dense uniform copper deposition and this is anterior to Schwalbe's line. So when you make the corneal wedge, you will see this band like pigment present anterior to the Schwalbe's line. So sometimes it's not visible on the, just a sit line examination. So on gonioscopy, this KF ring is visible. So this is very classical sign. You can pick up on gonioscopy. Okay. So whoever answered you did very well. Okay. So was it Sakshi or Ayushi? Uh, it was Ayushi, sir. Ayushi, okay. 
भी आयुषी को ट्रीट देनी है अंकुर में कोई याद करना भाई इनको दिल्ली लेके आओगे तो मिलाना जरूर <laughs> पक्का सर हाँ जी आपका क्विज शुरू हो रहा है सो जस्ट टेक अ लुक एट द क्वेश्चन एंड टाइप योर आंसर्स इन द चैट बॉक्स एंड हु टाइप्स इट फर्स्ट विल गेट द ग्रैंड प्राइज कर्सी एंड टोट फार्मास्यूटिकल देर विल बी टू क्विज क्वेश्चन एंड टू ग्रैंड प्राइज विनर्स in which condition can anterior chamber be visualized without gonioscopy kitna time dena hai sir i think 10 seconds 10 second to ho gaye ankur sir dekhiye chat box mein message to aane lag gaye तो भाई ये इनका आंसर ठीक है केराटोग्लोबस केराटोग्लोबस यस श्रीलता आर यू देर और ठीक है नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन यस सर वी विल फाइंड आउट वेश फ्रॉम ये थोड़ा मुश्किल क्वेश्चन है भाई हाँ वॉट इज वॉटर गोनियोस्कोपी श्रीलता इज फ्रॉम औरंगाबाद शील गेट द प्राइज नो प्रॉब्लम वॉटर गोनियोस्कोपी द फर्स्ट आंसर गौतम आर इंट्रोपरेटिव डायरेक्टली व्यूइंग थ्रू थ्रू माइक्रोस्कोप आई थिंक Dr. Shreeta is not a resident, but she is from Aurangabad. This is what she is eligible like. for. It's open for all. Acha, very good. So we have few answers, sir. Like most of them have written uh, intraoperative, using water as a medium. So I think Gautam is the one who talked about intraoperative gonioscopy. Yeah. So this is basically when you tilt the patient's head. You. put in balance salt solution so in between the nasal bridge and the orbit you, the water accumulates so the angle struck can the angle structures can be viewed through this water meniscus without use of gonioscopy so this is new technique described from singapore national eye center known as water gonioscopy so uncle you can just see who has got so it so right. using water as a medium will be the correct answer Yes, yes. I think yes. that should be the best answer because this is by Siddharth. Siddharth Manju. He is a resident in SMS Medical College. Acha, very good. Relation Siddharth. So you have? Is it now? I have given you overview of how actually when you put in the gonioscope, how the angle is visible. So this is something that can only be. learned if you are having your own gonioscope and in the outpatient you apply the gonioscope and you view the angle structures so once you get into this is habit of viewing angle structure you will be so happy yourself because many of these conditions you will be able to diagnose and this is one of the very nice investigations where you can actually see the pathology which is occurring in the angle and make a specific diagnosis based on that pathology so i have given you a summary of all these conditions and i also given you the website where more detailed videos you can go and see again and again and then match with your patients in the out out patient and that is the best way to learn gonioscopy initially you can just purchase a goldman two measure their indian companies which are manufacturing at lower cost and then you can later on graduate to buying a more expensive indentation gonioscope so that is in summary brief overview of how gonioscopy is used to diagnose and manage glaucoma patients thank you very much for your kind attention so thank any you, specific any specific uh, uh, instructions or precautions you want to pass on to the uh, young people while applying gonioscope uh, uh, i mean use of uh, you already said that you know try and buy a two mirror gonioscope uh, and then upgrade gradually to uh, a four mirror or a 
expensive yes. one so any specific precautions they should be taking care while trying to apply the gonioscope because that's a very so i think if, uh, this very important question uncle you have asked because often the patient is taken by surprise when you tell the patient that we are going to put a lens in the eye the patient gets very scared of some what is going to happen so you have to explain to the patient that this is a procedure that is going to occur and you should only do it if there is a preferably a relative with the patient because supposing patient has come driving and you do gonioscopy in both the eyes you will apply viscoelastic and they may be blurring of vision so then he'll have difficulty in going back so if that is situation do only one eye if the patient has come alone driving second thing is how to disinfect the gonioscope so for that you can use household bleach or you can use 1 to 10000 mercilate you can also use isopropyl alcohol swabs now the important thing is if you have cleaned once you have done the gonioscopy simple way is to also clean with soap and water if you apply alcohol you must let the alcohol dry we have had situations where alcohol wipe was used and gonioscopy was done and the patient had large epithelial defect and it caused a lot of major problem right so it was a vip patient so never put wet alcohol swipe and before you dry it don't put the lens in the eye second thing is when you're doing indentation gonioscopy don't apply too much pressure patient can have a vasovagal attack at that time you have to be very careful and third thing is in this era of minimally invasive glaucoma surgery if you have to buy two gonioscope buy one goldman and buy one swan jacob lens so there are also disposable swan jacob lens is available so you have to learn how to do gonioscopy on the operation theater table that has become very important technique for even for phaco surgeons because now you have all those implants being used by cataract surgeons like the eye stent or the hydrus implants not only for glaucoma surgeons so you must learn how to do the gonioscopy on the table and visualize the anterior chamber angle and see the pathology on the table and one more condition where it's very useful is when you have trauma and low iop so many times you get cyclodialysis cleft so there the eye is hypotenus so intraoperative gonioscopy after putting viscoelastic is very important and there's one more thing i wanted to share with you and that is about how to report gonioscopy so i think i have missed that slide somewhere yeah this is this is called a goniogram now the problem is you have done gonioscopy in jaipur and patient has come to delhi so how do i know what what was the finding because the ideal is to have a gonio photograph available so if you have a photo slit lamp you take the gonio photograph and send in the patient file or a digital on his phone but if that is not available then you should draw this goniogram so essentially this is a simple goniogram you have three circles the outermost is the shawl based line and then this band like pigmented tabacular mesh work the central line and then you have the scleral spur so if you have slide you can uh, share it again oh, yeah again we can start sir it will be better it will, this has not come in, in slide oh, share sir. yeah abhi sir uh, slide share off sir abhi अच्छा and if you draw this the anybody referred the patient to anywhere he can see what was the pathology where was the pathology and you should report this is in what we are doing in rp center we draw these three lines to denote the superior angle and the inferior angle and then write what is the posterior most structure visible and these arrows denote that primary position the tabacular mesh was visible on manipulation this scleral spur has become visible so when you report gonioscopy you should report whether angle is open and closed and if what is the posterior most structure visible the second thing you comment is what is the iris configuration is the iris convex configuration like angle closure 
or is it a concave conic region like I showed you plateau iris? And thirdly, you should see the level of iris pigmentation that I showed you, whether I is a heavy pigmentation of the iris or there is less pigmentation than any anomalies or foreign body or any other structure visible in the iris. So all these things you have to report when you do gonioscopy and the goniogram is the best way to report gonioscopy. So this was the patient and you can see on gonioscopy, this band-like line was visible. So my resident came very excited, sir, I have diagnosed this prominent Schwalbe's line visible in the angle and you can see, although this is very old video, this band-like Schwalbe's line, you can see this was visible in the angle. And I'll show you, I think th th there's a problem in the video. So this was actually broomstick injury. This was a wooden stick <laughs> in the angle, just looking like prominent ciliary body. And I think this was very heavy video is not playing. So when we did the FACO, this entire wooden stick came up, came out of the angle. So sometimes when you do gonioscopy, you get very, very interesting findings in the angle. And you have to learn to recognize these anomalies in the angle and then tackle them during surgery with intraoperative gonioscopy. So you here you can see this is your prominent shoulder yeah. line. This wooden stick <laughs> coming out of the angle. It's pretty long, sir. Pretty long and my heart was racing because <laughs> it was not expected to be. And then the danger, it may fall and then I have to call Vishal for <laughs> operating in the case. So luckily with God's grace, we could remove it out, borrowed forceps from retina colleagues and took out this wooden stick, which was diagnosed as a prominent ciliary body. Sorry, prominent Schwalbe's line. So thank you very much. I hope I motivated you people and the residents are very good. You have selected very brilliant residents. So I congratulate you. You gave, I think 90 out of 100, you got very good. Yeah, pretty really tough questions also. Yes, yeah, yes. Most of them were bang on the target, right answers. So they have done so very good. Any, here, any role of such dark room in the gonioscopy? Because... So I think once you have learned gonioscopy, then ideally all gonioscopy should be done in the dark room because if you have background illumination, then the iris will constrict and it will artifactually open up the angle. So for diagnosing angle closure, you need dark room, you need small one to two millimeter slit, we should not cross the pupil. So that is very important. So dark room is essential for gonioscopy. The prob uh, problem is in uh, shallow orbits. Uh, normalize, you can easily insert the gonioscope. Any tips for uh, very shallow orbits? Some villagers come with, you know, sunken orbits. Then it's difficult and the air bubble comes in between sometimes. Vishal, for those people, it is best to have an indentation gonioscopy because there the radius is less than that of the cornea and there you don't require any viscoelastic. So just one top of paracane and you put in the gonioscope. So there this becomes very useful that Goldman becomes very tough to do. Any questions from the residents? Because Sir has nicely shown almost uh, all kinds of gonioscopic uh, presentations and anomalies and some of them are pretty interesting. Uh, like foreign bodies and all. Uh, and our sir has also stressed about uh, uh, noting the gonioscopic findings, which I think all of us uh, want you guys to note because that's one learning we should have. Also intraoperative gonioscopy more so in the, even pediatric cataracts, I think most of us now propose that we should have a gonioscopic uh, evaluation before doing a pediatric cataract surgery because uh, half of them develop glaucoma after that. So that is another important thing. Yes. And the most important thing is that you cannot learn gonioscopy with one class. You have to keep on practicing yes. every day and, you know, share your findings with your consultant or your glaucoma consultant and they can give you a feedback and you can correct yourself. So yeah. practice so is the, very important to master this technique. So there is a question from Dr. Parul Bansal. How to differentiate between a goniosinaki and a peripheral antisinaki? See, classically, if the synechia bridges the angle up to the Schwalbe's line, it is known as a peripheral synechia. And anything short of that is gonio synechia. But from glaucoma point of view, 
once the iris is in contact with trabecular meshwork that is taken as a obstruction sign of angle closure and you diagnose angle closure glaucoma so it doesn't matter whether you have a full bridging it goes up to shoulder line or it is up to the trabecular meshwork so theoretically there is a difference but practically once the iris is in contact with the trabecular meshwork that is a pathological synechia which is going to obstruct the aqueous and you have to diagnose primary angle closure disease uh, seniors who have joined the class gopal sir rakesh parwal sir so once we diagnose angle closure in any of the eye so uh, should the pi be done in both the eyes because that's one question i think youngsters would like to know no always the, the pi should be done in both the eyes there is an option to the patient that he may get a done in the same sitting or he may get it done in the next sitting but it is mandatory to do the iridotomy in both eyes because one eye is develop angle closure fellow eye is definitely going to develop angle closure if the if the patient has associated cataract and you are you have short listed him for a cataract surgery then maybe you may not do pi in those patient because you are going ahead with cataract surgery but all other conditions phakic primary angle closure disease in which there is synechia iris attached to trabecular meshwork you should do pi in both the eyes sometime there is angle closure high pressure but patient is not willing for pi or there is a systemic issue then you must start the patient on pilocarpine till the yag pi is done because he is at risk for a acute attack of angle closure uh so there is a question but i think it is little difficult for me to understand it says if in superior angle only on nasal side scleral spur is seen while temporally shoulder line is seen how will we describe this gonios uh, gonioscopy findings so see when you do gonioscopy you have to report the degree of angle closure so you may have, may have a patient who has got 180 degree angle closure and rest of the angle is open you may have a patient where only 90 degree of the angle is open so once you report the gonioscopy finding you have to report how many degrees the angle is open or closed so that is how you answer this question it is not uniform that you re report open angle closed angle you report how many degrees of the angle is open and classically for diagnosing primary angle closure disease more than 180 degree of the angle should be closed then only then only you diagnose it as a primary angle closure suspect so i think that clarifies that uh, you have to look all around and look for the degree of angle closure i think the same thing goes for the angle recession also we have to look around and find out how many clock hours the angle recession is there uh sir uh, sir do you advocate for clear lens extraction or do a laser iridotomy Uh, do equally well in older patients according to a practical experience so it's basically see, iridotomy versus clear lens extraction see always if there is a patient who has got a clear lens and there is a angle closure disease in which part of the angle is still open always the first line of treatment is to do yag laser iridotomy that is first line treatment many patient get controlled it is a opd procedure which will take hardly 5 minutes if after yag iridotomy pressure is controlled with medication it's fine you have to follow patient every 6 months if the patient has got a yag iridotomy and iop is not controlled with medication then you move on to next stage of clear lens extraction so that is the protocol we follow at first iridotomy and then move on to clear lens extraction because clear lens extraction has its own drawbacks you can get complications you are dealing with a i with a very good vision so that has to be only dealt with by expert hands because you have a shallow chamber you can land up with lot of complications so go step by step first do a laser iridotomy and try to control the pressure don't straight away jump to clear lens extraction without doing laser iridotomy because if you get a complication then it can be a medical legal case so why you didn't do iridotomy as a first line management so can we put a laser iridoplasty in between say like if 
even after a yag pi the angle is not opening up and say if the patient is young say 40 years or 45 years so does iridoplasty also has a role in opening up the angles actually iridoplasty has a role if the pi is not able to open the angle the problem is there is heavy liberation of pigment because of our pigmented eyes and that heavy liberation of pigment goes and blocks the trabecular mesh work so sometimes you get a already angle is partially closed you get a very high spike in intraocular pressure so and secondly it can lead to cosmetic problems with white patches on the iris so we would not advocate it as a routine therapy between laser iridotomy and lens extraction you can control majority of the patients is definitely one of the techniques where you are not able to abort an acute attack of angle closure is very hazy cornea iridotomy is not possible there there's a role of argon laser peripheral iridoplasty uh, so there's one more question is gonioscopy mandatory before icl yeah i think gonioscopy should be done as a part of the workup because we have had lot of <laughs> patients who have gone referred to me for secondary angle closure after the icl due to wrong placement or vaulting and all so i think pre operatively like you take a optic disc in the workup of any patient who is to undergo ocular surgery gonioscopy once should be documented because many times you get a nts they are young patients you might get a ntn such you know iris there may be some other anomalies in the angle so that must be documented and picked up before so most of the refractive surgeons are using anterior chamber depth as uh, as the protocol for doing icl they are not doing uh, gonioscopy routinely so that can be misleading right sir yeah see even in a deep chamber they can be you know uh, peripheral anterior side like and it can yeah. be used in the post operative period because you know when when you do as oct you get a cross section mostly of course with recent new oct swap source you get 360 degree view but classical oct you get a cross section so there it is very difficult to see the panoramic view of how the iris is inserting onto the angle is there is anterior insertion or no so just because people are not used to gonioscopy or not trained that is why we are missing ideally they should be documenting this before surgery and taking a gonio photograph like you take a dis photograph so recently i have seen many hospitals when the patient's glaucoma file comes to us there is very nice gonio photographs attached along with dis photograph so that i found very heartening that people are now doing gonio photographs in the workup of patient that is the ideal technique to do so there's a follow up question of the same is pi must in uh, icl surgery so nowadays with the new icl i think pi is not being done because they have a perforation within the lens so earlier we, it was mandatory but with the new generation is not indicated uh there's another question uh, it says that patient is on medical treatment for glaucoma what is the limit of iop after which we should think of a pi for a glaucoma surgery so basically i think for pi uh, the, the 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 iop limit or iop limit for the glaucoma surgery there are two parts to this question i think so ankur now we are getting full grand viva yeah i think unrelated to gonioscopy <laughs> but i'll answer this question because it's not simple answer because that depends on the level of glaucomatous optic neuropathy if the patient has got a early moderate or advanced glaucoma you have to set the target iop so after pi if the target iop for that particular patient is not met despite medical therapy then you move on to glaucoma surgery so it's, it's not one iop i can give cut off for all patient depends on the level of glaucomatous optic neuropathy patient has and i think pi is not a, a iop dependent procedure it's more like a, a gonioscopic or an anatomical uh, yes. uh, 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 dependent procedure how the anatomy is changing for the eye yes yes so So, sir, I think um, uh, that's it. The questions will keep on coming. But yeah, yeah. You can email them. me later. I'll be happy to answer. Yes, sir. I'll forward it uh, to you all the questions and all the queries by the residents. And sir, excellent videos and excellent interaction. And this has been a wonderful kaksha on gonioscopy vast with a full house of uh, residents. And thank you all the residents, ROS executive, respected teachers, and most especially Tanuj sir for the excellent teaching today. we look forward uh, to the next class in the coming weeks with more residents on the hot seat thank you and keep giving your feedback and suggestions for the kaksha experience to improve uh, good night from team ros uh, thank you ankur sir thank you sir again thank you sir
thank you thank vishal anku thank you all the residents very good thank residents you. bye bye thank, thank you sir. sir it has been a refresher course for us after a <laughs> okay. very long time thank you sir <laughs> okay